Hello students, uh, welcome to the part where I shall discuss about the proof of Bernoulli's equation. So we shall consider here the case of a, a rotational and uh, streamlined flow of a incompressible and non-viscous liquid. So let me draw a figure here uh, which is showing that uh, here is a tube and the fluid is flowing through it and this tube does not have a uh, uniform cross section and let us say I am considering two cross section here one is here uh, at point A suppose this point is A and this part is having area of cross section this part is having area of cross section A1 right and I am considering another cross section uh, on the other end at point B and this area of uh, face is having area of cross section A2. Now the pressure here, pressure is always inward. So the pressure here is P1. So the force on uh, this face, this P1 A1 force into area and here the force is always inward. So this is P2 A2. The pressure at point B is P2. And this two area of cross section is at some height h1. Let us say this is at some height h1 and this is at some height h2 from the reference level. This pink line is the reference level. Right? So this heights of A and B are different. That is why they are going to have different potential energy. So uh, let us consider from the beginning that when this liquid is surging forward and it is advancing, it is entering through this uh, ad, ad, uh, advancing into the tube through this area of cross section uh, A, then if I allow some time interval delta T, so whenever it is starting to enter through this area of cross section, after delta T time, it will reach here at suppose point A1, right? Sorry, not A1, uh, let us mark it. Uh, yes, uh, A1 will be coinciding. So let us mark it at suppose uh, A dash. So after time delta T, at T is equal to zero, the fluid was entering through this gate and after delta T time, the fluid is here. So in time T, the fluid which has entered into the tube through this phase is contained in this volume right as well as the fluid which is going out of the tube through this phase through this uh, area of cross section the amount of fluid which is going out of the tube in delta t time will be contained in this uh, point, suppose in this cross section, so which is B dash, will be contained in this volume. And after delta T, the fluid is V1, it is moving with V1 velocity at its point. V1 velocity is going in and here V2 velocity is going in. So this much distance, this much distance is actually, this much distance is actually V1 delta T, right? And this much distance is what? V2 delta T. Right? So let me uh, sum it all for you. The area of cross section, the area of cross section at point A is A1. The area of cross section at B will be sorry will be A2 right the speed of liquid at A is let us say V1 as I have written here the speed of liquid at b will be v2 right v2 
in this direction v2 in this direction right and the pressure at a is p1 the pressure at b is p2 right so this distance here the distance a a dash is here from this diagram is v1 delta t and distance b b dashed is equal to v2 delta t right so by the equation of continuity what can i write by the equation of continuity what can i write that a1 v1 delta t is equal to a2 v2 delta t that is i'm sorry a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2 right so mass of the liquid which is going into it the mass of the volume of the liquid which is going into it what delta m is equal to that a1 v1 delta t multiplied by density rho right and the fluid which is going out that is going in delta mass in and the fluid which is going out delta m out is equal to a2 v2 delta t into rho right and these two things are equal so can i write it here a1 v1 delta t rho is equal to a2 v2 delta t into rho that is a condition here right now uh, about the proof this is all the description now how to prove that how to prove that let me redraw it again let me redraw the diagram again here so this is my reference level this is my reference level and here it was the pipe here at point a it was a and the fluid has entered up to this this v1 delta t this much and here it is a dashed right and this distance is v1 delta t right and the force is here is p1 a1 and here the cross section was at b the ingoing uh, so the outgoing fluid in time delta t is this so this is v2 delta t this much distance and the pressure uh, the force upon it is p2 a2 right now we shall use the work energy theorem in this equation in this scenario how to do that let me just quickly uh, uh, recapitulate the work energy theorem what was that that w conservative force plus w non-conservative flows plus w other forces any other forces was equal to the change in ke right and let us say this wnc and w others let me write in this way the wc plus w prime equal to delta k and wc we discussed that wc is equal to minus of delta u that is the minus of delta pe change in potential negative potential of change in uh, negative change in the potential of potential uh, sorry negative change of the potential energy plus w dash that is the work done by any other forces other than the conservative force so that is equal to that is equal to uh, delta k so w by the work done of non conservative from the other forces w dash is equal to pe delta pe plus delta k so that will be using this part here on this liquid column uh, so on this uh, part of the liquid sorry what are the forces acting on it the forces acting on it uh, that is p1 a1 force the forces the forces acting on it p1 1 forces on the left right uh, and number two p2 a2 on the right and uh, let us say number three delta m g 
that is the weight that is acting and number four the contact forces the normal normal forces uh, by the tube walls by the tube walls now if i somehow consider uh, that the uh, delta mg sorry the delta mg this weight is a conservative force right so uh, this work done by the uh, gravitational force by the work done by weight plus work done by the normal forces uh, normal forces is equal to the change in pe plus the change in ke right and as you know this delta this is zero actually why the reason is the normal force is always perpendicular to the velocity so that is why w by work done by the normal force is zero and this w weight very sorry very sorry not w weight this this uh, pressure uh, pressure force w pa force i'm very sorry i'm erasing this not weight this pa force right pressure into area force the pressure force that is equal to delta p and delta k w uh, mg has already been taken uh, into account because this is the conservative force right so wpa is the uh, work done by the force due to the pressure of the fluid I'm very sorry so uh, this wpa is equal to what force into displacement right and this delta pe is the potential energy of the fluid while it was here in this cylinder and what is what was this height h1 minus and the, this is the initial and the, what is the final potential energy while the fluid is here in this cylinder while it is leaving and this height was h2 so this was at the final position so this delta p is equal to pf minus pi and this delta k is equal to kf minus ki and what is a force and displacement is what force and displacement is what that force here at this part p1 a1 into this direction and the fluid is flowing in this direction so force is this and displacement is this in time delta t so in delta t time the change in sorry the work done by p1 a1 here are two forces p1 a1 p1 a1 plus w p2 a2 so p1 a1 is the force p1 a1 and displacement is v1 delta t plus force is what force is p2 a2 and the displacement is minus v2 delta t why because see this force is acting downwards so this force is acting in this direction this force is acting in this direction in this direction but the fluid is flowing in this direction so the displacement is happening in this direction the force in this direction and the displacement is opposite to each other that is why p2 a2 is the force and the displacement is v2 a2 right and this is pf minus py what is pf minus py delta m g h2 minus delta m g h1 so this is the part where we conclude about the potential energy now what is kinetic uh, energy what is the final kinetic energy final kinetic energy is what half delta m final energy is uh, velocity is v2 so v2 square minus half delta m v1 square all right so here now i can write it here that uh, this can be written as p1 a1 v1 delta t plus p2 sorry 
minus sign will come here minus p2 a2 uh, v2 delta t is equal to is equal to delta m gh2 minus delta m gh1 plus half delta m v2 square minus half delta m v1 square so now look at this very carefully look at this part very carefully a1 b1 delta t what was this a1 b1 delta t a1 b1 delta t what was this delta m in and delta m out which is equal so let us put this delta m so a1 b1 delta t was delta m by rho right this was actually delta m this is actually delta m so a1 v1 rho was equal to actually delta m by rho and which is also equal to a2 v2 and rho now look at it here a1 v1 delta t a1 v1 delta t is what a1 v1 delta t is m by rho S uh, sorry uh, a1 v1 delta t v1 delta t delta t so this is a delta m by rho so let me put it here p1 multiplied by delta m by rho minus p2 delta m by rho which is equal to delta m into gh2 minus gh1 plus delta m into half uh, v2 square minus half v1 square right so now see this delta m this delta m will be going everyone everywhere right so this becomes p1 minus p2 divided by rho is equal to g h2 minus h1 plus half v2 square minus v1 square right so let us uh, multiply rho on both sides so p1 minus p2 is equal to rho gh2 minus rho gh1 plus half rho v2 square minus half rho v1 square so let us rearrange this this p1 plus rho gh1 this one come this side this p2 go that side huh? uh, and this half rho v square this is coming this side so this is half rho v1 square so in p2 plus rho gh2 plus half rho v2 square so that is your bernoulli's theorem okay so that is all uh, in the next class we shall be discussing about the application of bernoulli's theorem